and welcome to the first episode of TV Talk, our new show where we review and discuss your favorite shows. On today's episode, we will be discussing season two of The Mandalorian. I'm Cooper Tennant, and here to show you the way is my panel of guests, Christian Gardner and Mateus Bueno. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I've been so excited to talk about this show because, I mean, it's one of the top things that Disney has right now. And I'm so excited for where this story is going and the kind of galaxy that they're building. I'm happy to be here. Doing great. And, you know, this show is probably the reason I signed up for Disney Plus, so I'm pretty excited to talk about it. Absolutely. I think a lot of people feel that way. Um, so we're going to start off uh, with non-spoilers, just in case anybody has, still hasn't seen it. You know, surprisingly enough, I'm sure there's some. Um, so what did you guys think of the season overall, and, and how do you think it compared to season one? I think it immediately just grew from what it was before. And I think we got to a place of showing the connection that these characters had. And I mean, the child and his voyage really became a father-son kind of relationship. And along with that, we saw how big and vast the world of Star Wars is. And I mean, it's just so amazing to watch week in and week out. Yeah, I also really like how they, you know, build up on the character relationships on the first season. I think they really pulled that off. And also on the world build building, we see a lot of stuff that like on season one is there, but like, or even on the old movies that we see, but they like, you know, go in depth into it, like stuff like from the first episode where we see the fighting ring, like where we see the, you know, the Jabba creatures from episode six. And then we see them, you know, I, I just really like the way they pull that off. But yeah, overall really good and develop a lot from season one. I agree. Um, keeping it as vague as possible, like Christian, you were bringing up, uh, you know, connections and, and world building, like season one was, pretty much all original characters to the Mandalorian and those characters carry over into season two but we also see a lot of connective tissue between um, stuff from the prequels stuff from the original trilogy stuff from even the sequels um, stuff that carries over so I, I think season two's done a, did a very good job of, of not making it feel too like callbacky too much like all, all the stuff that they bring back kind of feels natural um, it, it doesn't feel too forced. Do you guys have anything else you want to say before we jump into spoilers? Because there's so much of this show that people didn't really know about before going into it. So it's kind of hard to talk about this, like dancing around the, the big, you know, elephant in the room, I guess. Yeah, just kind of going off of that, the way that they write these stories and are able to create, you can tell how much these people love Star Wars. And there's so many little details that are callbacks to so many different things in all of the lore of Star Wars. And you can just tell how much they have a love for this. And it's little things that you wouldn't really recognize. Like I was watching the gallery uh, to prepare for this show. And they were talking about how those spiders that you saw in uh, episode two are uh, different art from Empire Strikes Back that nobody ever sees. And it's just different things like that that they draw upon um, to better grow their story. And not just trying to flash things and saying, uh, look, you remember when you were eight years old, but it's actual things that are integral to the story that they're trying to tell. Based on what I saw in the gallery that they, they really managed to like, you know, give the creative control to the, to those directors that work on this season. And they managed to, you know, put, put a little, add a little of their voice to the, to these characters and the, these stories. And, you know, it worked really well on how they do it. And you can tell like, some episodes, even before you see who directed, you can kind of tell their style and their love for this craft. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, with that being said, I think we will jump into spoilers. Um, so I'll start off with episode one. Um, I think episode one might be maybe my favorite episode of the season, maybe. Like, I think all, all of the episodes are really good and there aren't any that I, that I dislike. But I think um, having it's like it's like smart fan service i guess like fan service is something that i think i criticized rise of skywalker for a lot because there was a lot of like hey remember this remember that but having having a, a, a sheriff in like a tatooine town like wearing boba fett's armor and not really even knowing who the person was or anything like that and like not even acknowledging who's who, who the armor was like belonged to like you don't have to know who boba fett is to enjoy the episode um and so the writers didn't rely on you being a Star Wars fan, didn't rely on you knowing all this stuff. So you could show that to, to, to a random person and they might still enjoy it for what it is. Um, I mean, he does come into play later in the season, which I wasn't a fan of at first, but I think his, his solo episode really um, worked for me. Uh, I think that the whole episode is basically an action scene. 
Um, and I think it was shot fantastically by Robert Rodriguez. But what, what are you guys' thoughts just on, you know, full spoilers on, on the season at, at, as a whole? Well, I just wanted to touch on the Marshall. I, I think that episode, you can kind of tell throughout the in, entire series, it's just how things, they have a certain theme to them almost every single time. And that that first episode is more like a Western and just regular, the old cowboy shows that you, you used to see in like the 1970s and different things like that. I love the feel from that one. Yeah, I also really like that episode. And we, we get it, Cooper. You really like Cobb Van. <laughs> hey, man, listen, okay. He he's like he's like the perfect like cowboy outlaw like sheriff. He's got he he, he walks like a cowboy. Like it's almost a, it's very heavy handed. Kind of like how the Ahsoka episode is very like you know Japanese like samurai inspired. I I, I like that they're kind of t- bringing genres into Star Wars and like giving it that like sci-fi feel but yeah. I mean I don't know Cobb Van he's, he's a cool guy I'd like to see more of him I think yeah no, I really like that too the, with the different styles that they put into episode I was a big fan of like the they film episode the Jedi with Ahsoka the way they pull that like with the they managed to do use that samurai style with that lightsaber slash uh, blade fight that they did with at the end I thought they that really looked really cool that looked amazing that shot of them fighting and I, I really like, like you said, they, how they pull different styles from like stuff that inspired the original Star Wars into the series and they managed to do that more in depth on this show. Yeah, and that Ahsoka episode, I mean, that has to be one of the favorites. And for it to be such a beloved character within Star Wars, you had to have Dave Filoni direct that one. And just the way that they introduce her already into the story, immediately, immediately you already see her in battle. And that's just the character that people started to love and I know you guys were huge Clone Wars people oh yeah it, it was like between Ahsoka and like Bo-Katan showing up in this series even if they didn't really interact um being able to see and even like the Darksaber like that's a Clone Wars kind of thing like seeing Dave Filoni the creator of the Clone Wars being able to bring his creations into live action like into the mainstream has been so fantastic I think it, it's been almost a blessing um I will say real quick um, ju- going off of like the inclusion of Boba Fett, the inclusion of Ahsoka, Bo-Katan, and even Luke in the finale, um, do you guys feel like the season was maybe relying a little too much on pre-established characters, or do you see this as like a way to build up the story and start weaving things together? I think it's a difference in that they are actual integral parts to the story. It's not just, hey, look, it's Ahsoka, who you always love, but they needed to get to Ahsoka because that's the only jedi that they knew in this world right now and grogu needs to find his people or boba fett i mean probably that could lend itself into fan service but i think when you're talking about the mandalorian there's no way that you can't bring up boba fett and that entire lineage so i i think it's integral to the story and it's so fantastic so greatly done throughout the entire series yeah i think the the balance between fan service and you know actual like storytelling this was like really good because they could have easily you know just thrown a lot of stuff at you like you know for no reason just have like oh here's a character that you like here's this thing like you see in a lot of like you know the most recent uh some of the sequel trilogies some of the most recent movies where they just kind of put some stuff in there and they don't really add to the story but here you know they managed to actually you know kind of insert these characters in these stories in a way that moves it actually moves it forward instead of just you know bland fan service thrown at you at your face for no reason and I think they, they did a really good job with that in this. And I think yeah. everyone just loved that final sequence introducing Luke. I mean, it doesn't get any better than seeing Jedi Luke Skywalker in action coming to save the day that everyone has always waited to see. And oh, it, it, it's just amazing. Just to go off what you said, Christian, about um, them kind of weaving in characters, like the, the reveal of Luke is, is, is fantastic. And I do agree, like at first when we started seeing characters showing up, I did kind of, I, I worried that this season would become like a fan fest or a, a, a fan service kind of fest of like, look at this character, look at this character. Like um, the first season was so, so amazing because it was all original and it was not at all connected to any of the other movies. Um, except for, of course, Jedi in terms of Baby Yoda Grogu. Um, but I do think that the writers, it, they almost pulled off a miracle because I was going into the season expecting that if they had any, like, I didn't want to see Luke. 
I was okay with Boba Fett. Um, I was okay with some of the Clone Wars characters, but I really didn't want to see any of like the main characters of Star Wars. Um, but I do think that the execution of Luke in the end and Boba Fett and Ahsoka and Bo-Katan, like it all furthered the story and it all furthered their individual stories, which was really cool. Um, but let's jump into what are your guys' favorite and least favorite episodes? Christian, you can go ahead. I think just going off that same fan service conversation, I think when we really have that reveal of Boba Fett in episode six, directed by Rodriguez, I mean, the tragedy is so amazing and seeing those dark troopers you feel kind of that same fear but you see Boba Fett in action I mean having two Mandalorian take down all of those stormtroopers so much great action within that and you see it from Robert Rodriguez in the gallery he talks about how much he wanted to display Boba Fett in action as if this was the only time you're ever going to get it and I think fans really got that. I feel like um, my favorite episode for this, it's kind of really hard to pick this one because they all have their, you know, their, their pros and cons, but I really like the Ahsoka episode, uh, the Jedi, because uh, like I said before, like they, I, I was a big fan of the style that they did, like how they pulled stuff from like, you know, the Seven Samurai and stuff that influenced George Lucas on the original trilogy. And I think Filoni did a really good job with that one. And I'm a big fan of that last fight between Ahsoka and the, um, <laughs> But I, I don't know. I forgot the woman's name. It's like imperial, like officer, yeah. whatever. Her name is, yeah. I was gonna say the woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, I um, I think my favorite episode was probably the Boba Fett centered episode. Um, but in and, and I do agree. Like, I did love watching the gallery and hearing Rodriguez talk about Boba Fett. Um, I do think it's important that he made him as cool as possible because in the original trilogy, Boba Fett kind of sucks. Like he he looks really cool but he doesn't really do anything like he he walks around and then he gets accidentally hit in the back with a stick and then falls into the star like and dies so it's like other than looks you have nothing to go off of so I'm glad we finally have some content from him but in in sake of argument I'll say that my this is my second favorite episode was the second to last episode of the season with Bill Burr that episode was a lot of world building and character building you have the Mandalorian being questioned about his own religion and like what his own morals are. Cause he's been meeting other Mandalorians like Bo-Katan who are comfortable with taking their helmets off. And they're from other branches of, of, of the Mandalorians, I guess. And and he hasn't really been introduced to anything like this. Um, So when he's required to take his helmet off to scan it, like it it shows one, how much he's changed from the first episode. Like he's no longer a blindly, you know, he's not blindly following a religion or, or some sort of cult. And also shows how much he cares about getting the child back. Like what started as just a a routine bounty has blossomed into a pure like father and son relationship um, that he's willing to potentially give up his Mandalorian code um, and completely violate it um, in order to get his his child back. Also the the idea of like in the episode, they're basically killing natives that want the empire to leave. And there's a part where the TIE fighters fly in to save Bill Burr and, and um, Pedro, the Mandalorian and the, I don't remember his name. Um, and you're basically forced to cheer for the empire, which is such a strange sensation. Like, and then you see them get off the truck and all the, all the stormtroopers and shore troopers and them like they're cheering for him. And then they talk about Operation Cinder, which is a reference to the Battlefront game, which I was kind of surprised by, um, where he discusses like how millions of people died, but they all died for the empire. Um, and it was it was funny having like all the imperial officers are normally British and very polite, um, but you got this southern guy you know who looks like he crawled out of Texas talking about how the empire will rise and and all this other stuff. Um, I, I just thought that episode I don't remember the direct, it was Rick something um, the director. Yeah, yeah, he 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 did a fantastic job. Like it, man, just the the world building from that episode and and the the morality that you kind of have to to look at yourself with. I like I like how immersive it is too. Like you, you really feel like, cause usually like, you know, it's like you say, you see those officers, those imperial officers, you don't really like, you know, see what's going on behind it. Cause you're focusing on the main characters in the movie. But here you actually really see like the dynamic between like the different ranks and how they interact with each other. And I thought that was really interesting. Like it was really immersive. Like to really understand how it's like, we see a little bit of that in Solo, but like here it really like are in there. You know, there's that amazing scene where they're eating and then, Bill Burr uh, character shoots the, the officer like you can see how much hate he has towards those people how they damage him and I think that was really good too 
Yeah, and it brings a whole new perspective for the entire world of Star Wars. I, I like the little part in in the beginning of the episode when they start on this planet, how they have the kind of native people of this planet and how the Empire has taken over there and there's just kind of refugees in their own home, seeing how a, an entire out galactic war like this could take a toll on people and things that you wouldn't even think about. No, I definitely agree with that. Um, the episode was really focused around like world building and, and you know, empire versus rebellion. Like who, who's really to say who the good guys are? Um, on that note though, bringing up specific episodes, let's transition into the season finale. If we thought it was a good finale, you know, if we think it was too cliffhangery and of obviously the big Luke reveal, we're going to talk about how we feel about that. Mateus, why don't you take us away? Okay. I think it really uh, wrapped things up really well. And, you know, everything that they build up throughout the season, they use uh, the action. There was a lot of like a solid, like, you know, 10 minutes of act, just action, which I think worked really well. The Dark Troopers, I think, was amazing. Like, you know, how they, from the music behind it to, you know, the whole suspense that they build up at the beginning. At first, I thought they were like, are we just not going to see them in action? But then we do, and it really pays off. And, you know, the whole heist field to, you know, rescue Grogu. I think it balanced it out. It wraps it up with a lot of action. Of course, with the, with the, with the cliffhanger at the end, leaves a, a lot of open space for what's happening in the future. But I don't know what we're going to see in the future yet, but it was good. I think the finale, like you're saying, Mateus, just puts a bow, just like you said. It's, just, it's a complete end to that story for me and just the action that we saw. I mean, the battle between Mando and Giancarlo Esposito's character. Oh, it, I mean, can we talk more about Giancarlo Esposito? Because every time he's on screen, it's so, so menacing. And that battle with him, with Mando getting the dark saber and just him immediately saying, huh, I'm gonna see how this works out. Just shows exactly his kind of character of just, he's always thinking and always kind of up to something. And that was just so, so good. And oh. I cannot be more in awe of when they were in there with the dark troopers on the outside. And it, it doesn't get any better than sitting next to your 50 year old father who saw the Star Wars in theaters and him saying, no, there's no way, there's no way. And as we know, the one of the biggest reveals and maybe all of television. No, I, I agree. Like I, w I was watching with my mom and um, I am ha really happy that they kind of played down Luke's X-Wing flying in. I'm happy it wasn't like a big, huge reveal. Like they did it slowly and like okay. it was kind of plotting out. Um, what were you saying, Mateus? Did you guys think it was uh, him right away? Like, did you figure it out? Like, or was it like, what was your guys' first reactions when you first saw it? I, I actually, at first, like when you first, for like a split second, when I saw it head on, I thought it was the Falcon. And I was like, I hate that. I hate that so much. Like who, who, why would Han, like who would be on the Falcon or whatever? But then whenever I saw, when, with the X-Wing flying in, I was like, well, that has to be like, there's like, I'm thinking of other Jedi that were in the rebellion that might've been showing up, like, like Ezra from Rebels or like whatever his name is from uh, uh, Fallen Order, the video game. But then as soon as I saw like the black cloak, I was like, okay, it's Luke. And I was like, I wasn't a huge fan of it at first, but um, I think I, I, I've, upon thinking about it, I think I, I, I like it a lot. I like the inclusion. I think it just showed how much of Star Wars fans they were, because it was almost like a checklist that it was like, okay, one X-Wing, that could possibly be Luke. Then you see the cloak and you're like, okay, that might be Luke. And then you see the black glove and you're like, all right, that's Luke Skywalker. And you just see him absolutely destroy all those dark troopers. And it's just amazing. And that force crunch at the, on that last dark trooper, oh, so good. And I saw one video that was saying how that's usually forbidden for the Jedi to use that kind of force. So kind of showing how hinting at maybe Luke Skywalker isn't really a full Jedi, but hey, it was just so much fun to watch. I, I agree. I agree. I think I almost feel bad because the, 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 the big Luke reveal that literally no one saw coming kind of overshadowed the rest of the episode, which is really good. Like, I'm not saying that the Luke reveal is overhyped or overplayed or anything because it isn't. It's, it's fantastic. But the rest of the episode is, is really solid television. 
I think all the scenes between Moff Gideon and the rest of the crew where he's basically in control up until the point Luke kicks down the door or not kicks down the door, but, you know, basically slices his way to the, to the control deck and him basically knowing about the rules around the dark saber and, and giving up to Mando. Well, he doesn't, he, he gets beat, but he wants to be taken to the control center because he wants to see how it plays out. And, and I forget Katie Sackoff who plays Bo-Katan um, her like, glare on mandalorian like as as moff is explaining the rules to to mandalorian to mando i guess her her cold stare like realizing what she's gonna have to do i think that's like the perfect cliffhanger um, obviously i i want to see more from this but i do think that sets up a lot for season three which we'll discuss i i think i mean even the the team of four you know breaking into the into the ship and and kind of taking control them you know executing all the different stormtroopers and, and um, imperial officers, like I think they work really well together as a team. I, I think overall it was a fantastic episode, even if you and it's a fantastic finale, even if you take away the the whole Luke reveal. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that, and I think the way that it ends for me, I could see it as just being when I, I first saw it out. I, I believe that was just the last thing that we would see of Mando, and we just move on to the book of Boba Fett because I think what we saw. In this story of Mando, this entire time was trying to return Grogu to his people. And he's completed that mission. And that's the way. And he's still a Mandalorian. But of course, we want to learn how they figure out this whole Dark Saber situation. But I think for me, the way that this season ended, I, I don't necessarily need to see it continued, see that exact story continue, because I think the way it closes out is enough yeah i i agree with you christian on that one with like it it brings a, a good sense of closure to this story that we saw in these characters and uh, but you know obviously there's going to be a season three at some point and i think what they have in hand now to play out they're gonna we're gonna know a lot more about you know mandalorian culture and like because they hint at it with the dark saber and even on season one where we see the um the children of the watch which is like the people that rescued mando at first and I think uh, the next season is going to focus, probably going to focus on that, how this Darksaber is going to play out. And probably, you know, they're going to go to Mandalore to, you know, retake and we're going to see what's happening there. And I think that's what they have in, in, in play for season three. Obviously, you know, with the book of Boba Fett being a separate show, and then we're going to focus on his adventures. But I think season three is going to be a lot more about what it means to be Mandalorian and how they're going to retake their, their world. Because we see a lot of Mandalores in this season, you know, a lot of his adventures is, you know, finding his old people. We see Bo-Katan and uh, Boba Fett, who is revealed to be Mandalorian this season, and, you know, finally confirmed that. And that's what I think season three is going to be covered. Well, I think Mando, the way he feels, we already know how he feels about the Darksaber, and he tried to yield, but eventually there is going to be some battle between him and Bo-Katan. And I think that's going to be so much fun to watch how they get there. I really don't know, but that's for all the other writers, John Favreau, Dave Filoni to figure out. You guys kind of mentioned it. Season three, Grogu's gone. So we don't, you know, he's not worrying about the child anymore. I think it'll focus more on Mandalorians, like different sects of Mandalorians, different groups. Obviously, Bo-Katan is the leader of Mandalore. Well, she sees herself as the leader of Mandalore, but Mandalorian has the dark saber, so he he has the throne as of right now. Yeah, there's definitely going to be a, a certain conflict between the Bo Katan, which they hint at the finale here, and I'm excited to see that how they're going to take away that. Yeah, I, I really think that it's going to be so interesting seeing the the ideology of Mandalorians and the different groups of Mandalorians um, kind of coming out and, and popping up from the woodwork. Because before Disney bought Lucasfilm, there was a lot of Mandalorian content, and now that none of that is canon anymore, there's a lot of blank space i guess that they can use to fill um the kind of ideology behind like seeing different sects of mandalorians throughout the last two seasons has been so interesting for me because it is a lot of world building um and i think that's what really makes star wars great so past mandalorian season three book of boba fett you know uh, the person who directed that episode with him robert or do you guess he's exact i think he's either show running or executive producing or both so there's going to be a lot of that feel which i honestly can't wait for i think that's his directing style is so unique to Star Wars, and I, I cannot wait to see what he does. I'm unsure of if it'll be a sequel series that is set in the modern canon in terms of the Mandalorian time period, um, or if it's going to be, because the Book of Boba Fett makes me think that it might be callbacks and flashbacks 
to like, you know, other characters real quick. What do you guys think you're going to see or expect from Book of Boba Fett? I think we have to see how he gets out of the Sarlacc pit and just a lot of the crime and underbelly of what we see at Star Wars and just the mafia mentality. Yeah, I think this show is also going to, you know, this season we saw this character that everyone loved in action. I think this show is going to give us more of that to see a, a little bit more of his background, what he did in between, uh, how we learn more about him and see a lot of Boba Fett in action paying off on what we didn't get to see after Empire Strikes Back. I definitely agree. I think these shows and the shows that are upcoming um, are going to do a great job of, of engaging viewers and, and creating a storyline and, and adding more to past characters without, intri- without you know, stepping over the feet of um, the current characters. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching this first episode of TV Talk. We hope you enjoyed The Mandalorian. Uh, and we hope you, you know, got a little bit from our discussion. For Mateus and Christian, thanks for watching.